Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. Jaded Blossom has a brand new release and it's all about Halloween. There are new stamp, dies, a stencil, and even a new add-on for the gnomes. If you've been following my videos, you'll know that I only make cute Halloween cards and there's lots of cute in this new release. So let me show you everything that's included. I'll start with the freebie stamp set and this month it is a stamp and die set. Currently, this set is not available for individual purchase, but you'll receive it free with a minimum $60 purchase, and your order must include at least one item from the new release. It's always fun when companies offer a freebie, and I love that it's a stamp and die set. Next up, we have the Bone Chilling Treat stamp set and also the Coordinating Outline dies. Lots of fun images and Halloween sentiments. I love the ghost popsicle, definitely my favorite. Next is a stamp set called Halloween Candies Grid Style. Lots of small sentiments and images, and you can use their coordinating grid die to cut all of those out, and they fit perfectly on the bottom of a Hershey's Kiss. I like to use them on my card. Sometimes you need just that small image or sentiment. The next stamp set is called Gnome Want Candy, and there's also the coordinating outline dies. There are so many fun sentiments, perfect for your gnome Halloween cards. I think some of the candy sentiments would also work year-round. There is a new stencil in the release. This is Ghost Stencil. There are two pieces. One has the eyes and the mouth, and the other has the body of the ghost. So you can create a really fun background for your Halloween cards. The final item in the release is the Halloween add-on set for the gnome dies. And this is a huge set. There are so many dies included. I've already cut mine apart and added them to a magnetic sheet. And I will put a link in the description box if you're interested in the magnetic storage sheets I use for my larger die sets. This set has so many fun images. There's a new hat. There's a little Halloween bucket, the skull, the sentiment boo. There's a ghost, a cat, candy corn, a poison apple, and there's even a creepy little spider. I have several cards to share with you today. The pattern paper I'm using is by Bella Boulevard. This is their brand new Spell on You collection. This is only available in the 12 by 12 size, but the designs are small enough that it still works for cards. When I'm shopping for Halloween paper, I look for either Doodlebug or Bella Boulevard, since I know they focus on cute versus the spooky Halloween images. For card design number one, I selected two pattern papers. I used Jaded Blossom's card mat dies to cut out the very background piece, so it has that fun stitch detail. For the diagonal strip going across, I have some black and gray polka dot paper. And I am adding some Love From Lizzie peel-offs along the very edge. This is the pinstripe style in the black color. I'm using the medium width. And I did cut the peel-offs just a little bit longer than my card panel. I'll simply wrap those ends around the back. I'll put some ATG tape on the back and also some liquid adhesive along the very outside edge. Since the die adds a faux stitch detail to the card, sometimes those edges will warp slightly. By adding the liquid adhesive, it'll help it lay down nice and flat. Put some more ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. All of my cards in this video are American Standard A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. Now it's time to assemble one of the gnomes. This card will be featuring a boy gnome. I'll start with the outline background piece, and I cut it out from white cardstock, but you can use whatever color works for you. I think black and white are good options. Even though you won't be able to see it, I wouldn't wanna add a bright pink underneath since it may be visible along that very outside edge. The first piece I add is the beard, and then I'll give my little gnome some bare feet. There are also shoe options, so if you don't like the bare feet, I think they're adorable with his four toes. I'll be using the new hat, and it doesn't line up with the outline hat piece, so I do need to trim off the top. Next, I'll attach the mustache and also the nose, and I did put some foam dimension on the back of the nose to pop it up. This gnome will be holding the large candy corn. I never know if gnomes are supposed to be small or if those are really large items that they're holding. I use the outline piece for the candy corn where it has the hand placement. 
Then I cut separate pieces of all of the colors, yellow, orange, and white. Just glue all of those down. Now I'll attach the hands. If you want the gnome to hold the items differently, you can always trim off those hand placement areas, then just add the hands wherever you'd like. You can also do that if you want to use the image by itself and not have the gnome holding it. I will be popping up the candy corn. So I'm putting some foam dimension on the back side. I'll remove the release paper and attach it to my gnome. I think the gnomes always look really odd until they finally have the image that they're holding, or maybe it's just that they're missing their hands until they have that item. Next, I'll add a stitched oval die cut, and I did use some white shimmer cardstock for that. Before adhering it to my card, I'll put some scrap cardstock pieces on the back side, trying to keep it nice and level where it'll sit over the black and gray polka dot pattern paper. Then I'll adhere it down using some liquid adhesive. Now I'll put liquid adhesive on the back side of the gnome and add him onto the oval die cut. And I am leaving a gap underneath so there's space for the sentiment. The sentiment I'll be using is Gnome Tricks Just Treats. I did some heat embossing using white embossing powder on black cardstock. Then I cut it out using the coordinating outline die. I also cut out a second outline die piece from some gold holographic cardstock. And I'll layer those two pieces together so there's this lovely gold holographic drop shadow underneath the sentiment. I also cut out three stars, and the star dies are from Jaded Blossom's banner die set. I did pop them up using some foam dimension. Put two of them in the upper left hand corner and one to the right of the sentiment. Now I'll add some highlights to the gnome and the candy corn using a white gel pen. Then for a final finishing touch, I'm using some more Love From Lizzie peel-offs. This time the mini star style in the black glitter color. Just put some of the small stars on the gnome's hat. The nice thing about the glitter peel-offs, all of the glitter is sealed so it won't make a mess at all. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. The gnome dies are so much fun and there are tons of add-on sets available now. For card design number two, I'm using a card sketch for inspiration. This is my favorite card sketch. It's from OWH number 218. I selected two pattern papers for the background. This lovely night sky with colorful stars and also some more of the black and gray polka dot pattern paper. I used the black peel offs along the edge of the polka dot paper. Then I'll layer everything on some black cardstock. Put my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Generally, when I use this card sketch, I'm featuring some pretty pattern paper in that large rectangle, but I'll be changing it up. This time, I'll be adding an image in that box instead. I have some teal cardstock, and I've already done some paint splatter on the background. I use some silver, white, and also black paint. I'll layer that piece on some black cardstock, then adhere it to my card. Now I'll assemble three of the bat images. So I have the very background piece that I cut out from some light purple pearlescent cardstock. I cut out the body from some black cardstock and I'm adding just a small scrap piece of white cardstock on the back side so that the eyes will be white. You could also cut out those eyes individually and inlay them, but this was an easier way to do it without messing with those teeny tiny dies. Most of the colors on this card are fairly dark, so I think the white eyes really stand out on the bats. Even if you've never used the gnome dies, there are lots of images on the sets that you can use individually. So once I have all of the bats assembled, I'll put some foam dimension on the back side. I'm only putting it on the back of the body and not the wings. That way I can bend up the wings slightly for a little extra dimension. For the sentiment on my card, I'm using a set from last year's Halloween release. This is Eek. I stamped it on some purple cardstock, then layered it on some black cardstock, offsetting them slightly so there's the black drop shadow. Before adhering it to the card, I did put some scrap cardstock on the very left hand side, then adhered it down using liquid adhesive. Next, I'll add all of the bats to the night sky. Then for a final finishing touch, I'm using some more Love From Lizzie peel-offs. This is the silver holographic color in the mini star style. 
adding a couple of them around the sentiment and also several of them into that night sky. And I'll also add one of the tiny stars onto the sentiment. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. This is about as scary as it gets for Halloween cards from me. Now moving on to card design number three. I'll be using the new ghost stencil. I have a mini stencil mat from Waffle Flower. Put down my piece of white cardstock. I'll start with the body of the ghost and I decided to make some pink ghost. I'm using Catherine Pooler's Pucker Up in color. I'll lift up the stencil to see if there's any area I missed. The nice thing about the stencil mat, it has a groove along the top and the side. So your stencil and your paper just slide right into that area and they really don't move. I still hold it on the left side and you could also tape it down. So I'll set that aside, grab the second layer of the stencil for the eyes and the mouth. And this time I'll be using some Distress Oxide ink. It's the black soot color. I'll lift up my stencil to see if there's any areas that I missed. And I did miss a couple of the eyes and mouth on one of the ghosts. So I just laid that back down and I was able to add just a little more ink. Next, I cut down that panel. So it's four inches by five and a quarter inches. I will be adding some pattern paper at the very bottom. Once again, I'm using the black and gray polka dot pattern paper. And I'll also add a black Love from Lizzie peel off along the top edge of the polka dot pattern paper. I'll layer the background piece on some black cardstock and then again on some pink cardstock. Put my card front onto a card base. I like to use lots of cardstock layers for my cards. And I think by using the black and pink on this card, it really adds some nice contrast. The pink cardstock I'm using on this card is really old. I've probably had it for at least 15 or more years. I remember buying it at Costco and I told my kids it's magic paper since it has a different color on the back side. Next, I'll add a large tag die and this is from Jaded Blossoms. I think it's called the Luggage Tag Die Set. I use some white shimmer cardstock for the tag. Just glue that down using liquid adhesive. And this is where I'll be adding another gnome. This time, one of the girl gnomes. I already have most of her assembled and she'll be holding a pink ghost. I use white cardstock for the background and pink cardstock for the main body of the ghost. So now the eyes and the mouth are all white. Just glue those two pieces together. Next, I can attach the hands. I'll just glue those down. And I did pop up the ghost using some foam dimension. I thought it would be really cute for her to hold a pink ghost matching the pink ghost in the background. For the sentiment on the card, I'm using the Boo die, and this is part of the Gnome Halloween add-on set. So it's the perfect size if you want your gnome to hold it, but you can also just use it as a sentiment on your card. It has the outline layer and then also the word and the exclamation point. Just glue all of those together. I have some foam dimension on the back of my little girl gnome. I'll adhere her to the tag. And I did place her so the top of her hat covered up the hole on that tag die cut. Before adhering the sentiment, I'll put some scrap cardstock on the very right side, just where it goes off of the tag die cut. I'll also put some foam dimension on the back side. And this is from Honey Bee Stamps, it's their thin foam strips. I'll remove the release paper and attach the Boo sentiment to the right of the gnome's hat. And to add a little more detail to my pink ghost, I'm using some Love From Lizzie peel offs. This is the mini circle style and adding two small black circles inside the ghost's eyes. And I think that really adds a fun expression to the ghost. Next, I'll add the little highlights to the sentiment, the gnome, and also the ghost using a white gel pen. And it's hard to see in the video, but I used some silver holographic cardstock for the bows that the gnome is wearing. So I thought it'd be fun to use some silver holographic peel-offs to add to her hat. This is the mini circle style, and I'm using the smallest and also the medium sized circles. There are lots of fun gnome hats in the add-on sets. This is the traditional gnome hat that's included with the girl die set, and it's so easy to decorate and customize. Next, I'll be stamping the sentiment boo directly onto the background. So I'm using my Mini Misty. I will ink it up just a couple times to get a good solid impression. 
So I'm adding two of the Boo sentiments above the die cut Boo, and then two of the Boo stamp sentiments below it. I thought with all of those ghosts in the background, we needed more than just one Boo sentiment on this card. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. This is my favorite card from the whole set. I just love the cute little pink ghost. Now moving on to card design number four. I'm using a card sketch for inspiration. This is from Sugar Pea Designs. It's Sugar Sketch number 32. I selected some green polka dot paper for the background and also this adorable paper with lots of different Halloween icon images. I used my scissors to cut the angle at the bottom of the icon pattern paper. I did round the top two corners. I'm layering everything on some black cardstock. I'll be stamping the sentiment directly onto the pattern paper. Since it is a tone on tone design, it'll still stand out enough. This is Tis the Season to be Spooky, and I will ink it up several times to get a good solid impression. This sentiment is included on the Gnome Want Candy stamp set. I love the images on the pattern paper. Witches, ghosts, bats, jack-o'-lanterns, there's cats and frogs. Even with the witches and ghosts, it's still a very cheerful Halloween paper. Now I'll put some ATG tape on the back and layer this piece on some black cardstock. Then I'll add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. I will be changing up this sketch just a little bit. On this sketch, there are two banners. I'll have both of them going straight out from the left side. I cut one from purple cardstock and one from orange cardstock. Just layer those two pieces together. I'll be adding a circle die cut, and I did cut this out from some white shimmer cardstock. Before adhering the circle down, I will put some scrap cardstock pieces on the left side. Then I'll adhere it to the card using liquid adhesive. Next, I'll be adding the adorable cat image, and this is part of the Gnome Halloween add-on set. So I have the main body of the cat. I used some black cardstock. And I did inlay the tiny pink nose already. I put some double-sided tape on the back and just popped that teeny tiny nose in place. For the inside of the ears, I used some more purple cardstock. This cat will have yellow eyes to match the cat on the pattern paper. I'm using my reverse tweezers to pick up those teeny tiny pieces, adding just a small drop of Barely Art liquid glue and adhering them in place. To make those eyes stand out more, I'm using some more Love From Lizzie peel-offs. This is the bubble design, which has been discontinued, but I still have this sheet left over. It had this fun little chain design, and in the center were some teeny tiny circles, so I knew those would come in handy. I'm using the medium sized circle and adding them to the center of the cat's eyes. I'll use some more Love From Lizzie peel-offs. This is the mini star style in the black glitter color, putting two in the upper left-hand corner and three around the sentiment. And for a final finishing touch, I use a white gel pen to add highlights to the cat's ears. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. I know the cat's supposed to look spooky, but I think it's adorable. For card design number five, I wanted to use one of the images on the Bone Chilling Treat set, but I don't do coloring at all. So I decided to do some ink smushing using the Pixie Dust ink color from Katherine Pooler. I stamped some of the ink directly onto the mini stencil mat, sprayed it with some water, then I'm pressing some white cardstock directly onto that wet ink. And this will create a really fun pattern. I'll set that piece aside to dry before stamping the image onto it. The card sketch I'm using for inspiration is from Sugar Pea Designs. This is Sugar Sketch number 49. I selected this lovely plaid pattern paper and also some of the green tone on tone polka dot paper. I'm adding some green mirror peel offs along the edge of the green polka dot pattern paper. Just wrap those ends around the back. And I'll also add this fun wavy border, and this is from Jaded Blossom's Border Die Set. I'll adhere that to the lower portion of the green polka dot paper using some liquid adhesive. I cut it just a little bit too long, so I flipped over the panel, used my scissors to trim that off. 
Then I'll put some ATG tape on the back and layer this piece on some orange cardstock. I'll add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Now I'll pull out the ink smush cardstock piece. It's mostly dry. Using a circle die, I'll cut out one area of the paper. So now I have this really pretty pinkish purple background. I've already stamped out the sentiment spooky treats and I'll cut it out using the Candy Charm Gnome add-on set. This die set is perfect for cutting out all the small sentiment and images on the candy stamp sets. And I also cut out the scallop circle and I'll layer those two pieces together for the sentiment. Now I'll pull out my mini Misty so I can stamp the sentiment onto that ink smushed background. I'm using one of scrapbook.com's clearly amazing multi-use mat. I think that's what it's called. It has a tacky side, so you just remove the cover and the smallest size fits perfectly into the mini Misty. They do have larger sizes as well. I placed my circle die cut right onto the tacky side. I'm also putting a magnet on just so that mat doesn't move. But now I can ink up my stamp several times to get a nice solid impression and that circle won't move at all. To remove the die cut from the mat, you just slightly arch that mat and it pops right off. Then I'll place the cover back onto the mat. I'll layer the image circle onto a purple circle die cut. Before adhering it to the card, I will put a scrap piece on the very back side. And for that scrap piece, I just cut a circle that's just slightly smaller than the purple circle. And then adhere it in place using some liquid adhesive. For the sentiment, I'll pop it up using some foam dimension. And I also put just that small scrap piece on sort of the lower right hand corner. After adhering that small scrap cardstock piece, I'll put the foam dimension on the back side. And I'll make sure to get good coverage so there isn't one area that sags. Then I'll adhere it in the lower right hand corner right next to the image. On the card sketch, there are two banners that go on top of that image circle, but I decided to add two small banners in the upper left hand corner instead. And the banners are from Jaded Blossom's banner die set. The larger banner, I used some orange cardstock, and the smaller banner, I used some green cardstock. And I did put that small scrap piece of cardstock down before adhering the green banner. For embellishments on my card, I'm adding some green enamel dots. And I don't know the brand, I've had these in my craft room for probably many, many years. They do have adhesive on the back, but I'm also adding a small drop of liquid adhesive just to make sure they don't pop off later. Put two of them on the banner in the upper left hand corner, add two in the lower right hand corner. Also adding just a little bit of sparkle to the ghost eyes and the main portion of the popsicle. Then for a final finishing touch, I'm adding some Nouveau Dream Drops around the ghost popsicle image. This is the Cloud 9 color. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. For card design number six, I'm using Jaded Blossom Sunburst Card Matte Die. I selected a pattern paper that has lots of jack-o'-lanterns on the background, and I cut out the frame from some black cardstock. I'll put some double-sided tape on the back side of the frame, flip this over, and inlay all of those sunburst die-cut pieces. This is a fun die to use with lots of different pattern paper, but for this card, I decided to go with just one design. And whenever I use a die like this, I get a lot of questions about what did I do with the black pieces from the frame or also the jack-o'-lantern frame piece. Most of the time, I'll simply toss those pieces into the recycle bin, but I did decide to use them this time. So instead of two cards using this design, I'll have four to share with you. I have just one more piece to inlay. Now I'll remove the release paper on the back side and add this piece onto some orange cardstock. And for the little areas where I didn't get any double-sided tape, I did put some liquid adhesive. And I didn't center that piece very well, so I did go and trim off a tiny bit of the orange cardstock on the top portion. Then I'll put my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Instead of adhering my gnome directly onto that background, I'll be adding the little witch onto a vellum oval, and I already did some paint splattering on that oval. I used some gold and also some black paint. I have most of my little witch gnome assembled. I used the hat that has the spider web and the little spider hanging down, 
I'm not a big fan of spiders, so I use some black glitter cardstock. Makes it a little less scary. The witch will be holding a bottle of potion. I used some pearlescent vellum for the bottle. It's from Lawn Fawn, but I think it's been retired because I couldn't find any links for it. I will be popping up that potion bottle. I'm putting some foam dimension on the back side, and I made sure to only put foam dimension on the back side where there's cardstock. So the very top where the cork is and also behind the purple potion. Now I can add her green hands, and I do have foam dimension on the back portion of her hands, and I'll put liquid adhesive where her fingers are. Now I'll adhere my little witch onto the vellum oval. I did put foam dimension just on the back side where her shoes are, but for the rest I'm using liquid adhesive. Now I can add my oval onto my card. So when I flip that over, I'll add liquid adhesive just where the gnome image is. That way the adhesive won't show through on the front of the card. Then I'll adhere the oval right onto my card and it will cover up the circle portion of the sunburst design. Next I'll add the sentiment and I've already stamped and cut this out. Spooky Halloween wishes and gnome kisses. And I did use the outline die to cut out a second piece from some orange cardstock and I'll layer those two pieces together so I have the orange cardstock drop shadow. I will put some foam dimension on the back side and adhere the sentiment in the upper left hand corner. Then to finish off the card I'll use a white gel pen and add just a few highlights to the witch's hat and the potion bottle. And for the tiny little black circle on the witch's nose, her little wart, I did use another Love From Lizzie peel off from the bubble sheet. It's just one of the smaller sizes. I made two featuring the green witch. And the other two cards, I have a boy gnome holding a trick-or-treat bucket with a couple of candies inside. And the sentiment is, Gnomey want candy. The candy dies are included on Jaded Blossom's Christmas banner set. Now here's another look at the 14 cards I made using Jaded Blossom's brand new September 2022 release. It's all about Halloween and it includes a new gnome die add-on set. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. Jaded Blossom's gnome dies are super popular and they do tend to sell out fairly quickly. They have tons of different add-on sets, so there's something for everyone. And I love that they're also introducing some new stencils. I'm really enjoying stencils lately, and it's something I haven't used a whole lot in the past. Jaded Blossom is one of my favorite craft companies, and I love that their products are made here in the U.S. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.